While the web is one of the main areas of study in ICT, it's also home to many useful resources. So what are the top websites for ICT teachers? We went to Cooper's Technology College in Kent, and the staff there had no problem in coming up with the top ten. Booting up our countdown is the classroom that's only a click away. ICT Classroom is at number 10. I'd say that it's got a, a broad range of resources, covers a lot of the major software titles. I would use it for uh, web creation and uh, a lot of the popular office suites of programs such as Excel, Word and Access. ICT Classroom is a site that higher ability students will be able to use uh, in terms of its resources and tutorials. For lower ability students, I would look at taking the material off of there and adapting it to my own needs. It's already a very nice looking website. And I kept finding that I was drawn back to it time after time and I wasn't quite sure why, which is what prompted me to email them <laughs> to find out what, where they were going with it. They are actually going to be putting on new um, resources for the DIDA and also for the OCR Applied ICT. And number nine, it's a site that sounds like it should be a mess, but is in fact anything but. Shambles is a database type of website. It actually has 25,000 links to other sites. It's quite big. There are thousands of links to websites from all over the world, uh, but British sites feature heavily in there. You can actually find lots and lots of free resources for Dreamweaver or for Flash tutorials. Sites that, that are being developed by, by other ICT teachers, um, other uh, students of ICT. I, I think with, with a site like that, it really takes a lot of time to look through to, to, to find what you're looking for. Um, but just the, the sheer range of uh, material that's on there took me quite by surprise. ICT is a subject that moves as fast as the technology it studies. And our eighth place site is one that helps everybody keep up. I think you need to have a site where that, that's really focused in on IT terms and their meanings. Different abbreviations, different phrases uh, crop up every, every month, every week maybe. Uh, it's just really useful to have uh, something that's uh, kept up to date and, and gives you a, a correct, concise definition. Although there are quite a few adverts on there, you can actually just miss all that. I think because of the easy layout, the white background, you just focus in on what, what it is you're after. If a student asks me something I don't know the answer, I'm, I'm quite upfront and honest about it and I'll say I, I don't know. And uh, I think you know, this, this website's a good way of illustrating that and you can point to uh, the speed of change, uh, how difficult it is to keep uh, up to the minute on this subject. From a resource that celebrates the exciting pace of ICT to one that's more concerned with online responsibility. From America's public broadcasting service, PBS Kids is number seven. PBS Kids is a, a site that's about internet safety, uh, copyright legislation, etiquette on the net. I actually like the very visual look of the site and I think it's nice, you could use it as a starter activity maybe for year sevens even when they first start at the school. It allows them to gain a web licence so right from the start it's a very nice colourful looking page where they type in their name and that, that comes back later on when they receive their licence and then they can follow the route and they have to answer questions and each time they get a question right it allows them to move on. Looking at the site uh, there's some really sound advice, um, some real pearls of wisdom on there. ICT students are hungry for knowledge and at number six is a website that might prevent information indigestion. It's BBC Bite Size.
It's just clear, uh, well organised, breaks down into different topics well. And I really like the uh, format whereby there's a, a revise and then an instant test afterwards. It's easy to use, uh, it's clear. There are no distractions on those pages other than the questions and the answers. Very simple but very effective. A new feature is further down the page you can actually find an emailable test so that the student can actually fill in their email address, put, I think they put their name, and then they can work through a, a short test and they'll get a reply. In the run-up to examination time, when it's important they have that knowledge before going into the examination room, uh, as, as a no-nonsense revision type site, I'd recommend BBC Bite Size. We're halfway through downloading our top 10 ICT websites, and so far we've seen a good mix of resources for teachers and students. Our number five recommendation is one that's also relevant for parents. Chat Danger. Chat Danger is a really useful site where students can find out about the dangers of chatting, not just on a mobile phone or in a chat room, but also by email or using the messenger programs that they use. The stories on the site, they're actually by students' own peer groups, so therefore they can learn in a way that I think will give them a little bit more understanding, maybe empower them. One of the things that it's really useful for is because parents and carers, where, whereby they can actually monitor what their children see on the television, they can't do quite the same on the internet. There's actually true stories on there, so it will say the child's name and their age and and they can sort of see that it's real, there is a real danger, something they need to be aware of. At number four is Justin Arnold's ICT Teacher, a site that can speak for itself. Justin Arnold is a lovely site. There actually is so much on there, the more you start looking, you'll realise there's more and more. It's not so much directed at the hardware, but more um, the software, popular software titles, uh, how to use them, uh, Access, Excel, uh, Word, etc. I wouldn't expect students to, to actually uh, go to Justin Arnold and, uh, and begin work from there, but it's more uh, a container for resources uh, that can be used in the classroom. There's resources for the teachers, there's resources for the students, but what is really fun is the games. The games are really relevant to IT. But it's not all play, play, play. The Teachers Resource Exchange is a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing destination, and it's our number three. This site is for teachers, by teachers. Everyone's joined together and sharing their resources. I think with the Teachers Resource Exchange, you can actually be really confident that what you're getting is quality material. Usually included is a lesson plan and any worksheet you need is also there. You can search for any key stage that you're after and when the search has come back, it's identified whether it's a first thought activity, or whether it's a developing ideas activity, a database activity, or something in Excel, you can find it. It's something I, I do intend to do when, when I uh, get round to it, yeah. Um, it's because I've, I've taken a fair amount of information off of these kind of things, I need to put some back really, yeah. Share and share alike. Channel 4's web site took second spot on our chart. One of the things I really liked about Webbit is that it actually shows you a breakdown of how children have planned to build a website. When children are going to make a website, it's actually the planning of it and the research which is more important than actually getting onto Dreamweaver and building a website. It starts off very basic, uh, how to do a very basic text-based web page to develop a, a, an all-singing, all-dancing website. You can find resources there for sound, images, um, photographs, 
which you can take, there's no copyright on them, so children can use those in their websites. It explains in, in real detail uh, how to go about constructing a, a web page from scratch. Uh, and there's things like Pixo out there at the moment, which is not really true web page design, uh, but this allows students to produce something that they see as their own, that they've developed from scratch, and it's without help. I think the way things are going as well with the DIDA qualification that they ultimately will be building e-portfolios and this is a good route to get to practice that. We've seen some excellent sites for ICT teachers. Before we find out what the staff of Cooper's Technology College chose as their number one, let's back up our list from 10 down to 10. At 10, ICT Classroom. At 9, Shambles. At 8, Webopedia. At 7, PBS Kids. At 6, BBC Bite Size. At 5, Chat Danger. At 4, Justin Arnold, ICT Teacher. At 3, Teachers Resource Exchange. And two, Webit. Top of the Click Parade is a site filled with resources for teachers and enjoyable projects for students. It's Teach ICT. Well, one of the things I liked about Teach ICT was the fact that you could put the students on there and let them just work their way through the tasks. Or you could actually go through it yourself and use their resources and turn them into your own type of document. I think that the, uh, the teachers that have contributed to the site uh, have just realised in, in the classroom what works for their students and what doesn't and have tried to uh, jazz up the resources. They can follow the tasks one at a time, they can work on them at their own pace, but the actual topics they've chosen are quite futuristic, um, very child-friendly, very colourful, using cartoon images that they're used to seeing. The scenarios are quite a fresh, uh, modern type scenario, uh, which isn't always the case with the uh, resources on the national curriculum. There's Things like hacking and spies, you know, that's engaging some students. And the idea of creating routes to how to get to the fashion show or sending out a letter to a VIP to attend your show, they all really enjoy doing that. I already had in my head this was going to be number one, and then I worked from number 10 upwards, but number one was already there. <laughs> You can find links to all the websites mentioned in this programme and more on our site at teachers.tv. Happy clicking.